Hello and welcome to a coding challenge, which I'm going to call Blobby Coding Challenge. I want to make something that's a blob. This is, a, uh, this is sort of loosely a part of the Agario coding challenges, where there are these circular things moving around the screen. But I'm in this coding challenge only thinking about just that sort of stationary circle, which is a nice, perfectly round, beautiful, happy little circle right there. But I want it to be wavy, curvy on the edges and kind of feel a little blobby. So let's think about, I'm going to come over to the whiteboard here and, and draw some stuff. Um, right? This is a perfect circle, which is drawn as an ellipse. But another way I could draw this per perfect circle is by using a call to a function called begin shape and a call to a function called end shape. And in between there, I could make a lot of calls to a function called vertex. So if I were to say, put a vertex here, put a vertex here, put a vertex here, vertex, 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 and connect them all, then I have what I started with, a nice, perfect circle. But what if I were to make this vertex go out over here and this one come in over here? Then I might have something that appears kind of curvy. And what if these wiggle all around and kind of blob around? Then I have something that appears kind of squishy and blobby. Now, there are a couple different ways I could do this. Uh, option number one, I could do some kind of physics simulation with a lot of springy forces. So I have this like almost as if these are uh, all connected by springs. And as you pull one, it pulls the other. And it kind of flips back and oscillates and jiggles and that sort of thing. I'm going to do that in another coding challenge. You can take a look at one of my uh, toxic libs, uh, kind of like cloth simulations to get an idea of how you might do that. Another way I could do this is with Perl and noise. And I think I'm going to try that right now. Or I could use like a sine wave. In other words, all I want to do is alter this radius. Right? Uh, each of these points is calculated based on an angle, which I'll call theta, and a radius. If I iterate over all the different angles but change the radius uh, and have those radi radii move, move up and down randomly, I can get something that seems kind of squishy and blobby. So let's see if we can make that happen. The first thing I want to do is go into the blob object and find this show function, which is right down here. And you can see what's happening here. I'm drawing an ellipse. But I'm going to change that now, and I'm going to do a couple things. One is I'm going to say push and pop, because I'm going to also use translate, because I want to first translate to the center of this object. And then, once I've done that, I can say begin shape, and I can say end shape, and then I can have a loop. So what do I want my loop to do? I want an angle to start at 0, and I want to go all the way to 2, how do you spell 2 pi? And I want to go up by some amount. Uh, I'm going to say 0.1. And I really should be more thoughtful about this, but I'm just going to randomly do this. And then I'm going to say I have an x, which is now this object's radius times cosine of that angle. This is a polar to Cartesian uh, conversion, which I would refer you to another video where I go through this math in a bit more detail. But now I can just set the vertex to that x and y position. So let's run this and see if we get basically the same result. I find it hard to believe that that's really what happened. Am I looking at the correct code? Let me comment that out. Oh, it's not there. <laughs> Shockingly, that looks way too similar. I guess that worked. Oh, you can see that it actually changed because it's not so perfect there on the right. Let's, um, let's um, just to see, see how this is actually working, let's draw little ellipses and take out the vertices. Right, you can see that's what I've actually done. I've drawn all these little circles and connected them. Uh, so there we go. So this actually worked. The thing is, I want this variable, uh, this r, to be something that changes. So what if I said, r equals this dot r plus a random amount between negative 5 and 5. And so, and I used r instead. What would we get now? We would get something that looks like this. You can see those radii are changing. What if I did something where I said, um, I want to have an offset which equals map sine of the angle. Uh, which goes between negative and 1 and 1 to negative 5 and 5. And what if I say angle plus frame count times 0.01 or something? So, uh, and so this is now this dot r plus offset. That didn't do very much. 
Oh, you know, um, <laughs> I just realized, uh, yeah, that's just moving all the vertices together with the same offset. So they have to be offset from each other. Anyway, the point of what I want to do is not that. <laughs> Uh, actually, I want to make this, a sine, this sine wave thing work, OK? What I want is for each one, I want, to do, I want to get this to work. Let's make this actually work. I want it to do this. I want you to just see what it looks like when there's a sine wave. So I want to have th this. I, I need a separate value uh, that's, I, that really should work. Or I guess maybe these angles aren't, are changing by too much. Hold on. Let's, let's make this work. Right? Do I need to multiply this by like some tiny amount or something? Uh, um, I'm back. <laughs> uh, whoops. Oh, I'm back. So actually, the, the, the angles I just forgot are only between 0 and 2 pi. So there's only one cycle of the sine wave. So I actually want to multiply the angle by a lot uh, if I want to see that sort of oscillation. So I, I can get something kind of like this. And you know I could play around with these uh, you know values. Anyway, you could you could get the idea of how I might and I could off you could get the idea of how I can do various kinds of different offsets to change the quality of that shape. But let's actually just use Perlin noise, which I think will produce some interesting results. So what if I were to say um, noise, uh, and I want to have um, an x offset, which I'll say equals 0, noise of x offset, which goes between 0 and 1. And I want to map that between negative 25 and 25. And I want that x offset to increase by some amount uh, for each one of those. So if we see this, you can see now I have this kind of blobby looking thing. And each time I refresh, it looks a little stranger. Now, you'll notice I have an issue where I'm not able to connect the last point to the first point very well. And there's ways we can kind of improve that. But you can see I've got like this kind of goofy looking shape. Now what I can actually do, there's a couple things I could do. Number one is I could add a y offset. And the y offset is kind of like uh, a, a global variable for this object. It could start at, it could start at 0 itself. And, uh, and the y offset is a thing that doesn't change for each one, but just changes over time itself. So if I use two-dimensional Perlin noise, now you're going to see this kind of like blobby shape. Now the y offset is changing rather fast, so I might want to slow that down quite a bit. And you can see now I've got some, a more undulating-like type thing. I could have also, by the way, just not used two-dimensional noise, but I could have just, I could just say, x offset plus y offset. And you'll see this is doing something. This looks like it's actually kind of like spinning because the noise values are actually kind of rotating around. So that's another effect that you can kind of get by just like changing where the noise is beginning. And even this, like this doesn't bother me so much. But you could consider using something like this in Agario to make it kind of a little bit squishier and, um, and, and that sort of thing. So this kind of gets you the basic idea of having a bit of a Perlin noise ball, so to speak. I think what I'll do, hopefully remind me in the comments, is when I publish this code, I might uh, uh, simplify this even further to just have that kind of shape thing. And you can kind of tweak it. And let's think about, and about improvements that we could make to, um, to tie the last point back to the uh, first point itself. Um, OK, so thanks for watching this. At some point, I'd like to show you how to add some spring forces to this, which would be another, uh, another nice um, kind of quality to it as well. OK, thanks for watching this uh, coding challenge. And I'll see you again in a future video.